Hello guys, um, I am Volkan Seimann from Deutsche Wohnen and Co. and Eignen, um, the campaign from Berlin which wants to expropriate the big landlords. Um, and in the following 20 minutes, I just want to give you an overview about um, what we do, how we do it, why we do what we do and um, the effects of our work. So, yeah, just a, just a sentence about me. I am um, 29 years old. I came to Berlin five years ago. I had severe problems with um, finding a flat. Um, I'm a sociologist working at um, Technical University Berlin, um, and I do research on, on, on autonomous cars. And since two years, I'm, I'm in this movement, um, fighting for for overcoming the housing crisis and the gentrification of our city. So this talk is structured by four points. Um, point one is the sit current situation of housing within Berlin. Um, point two is um, what our campaign is about, what, what we want to reach with our campaign, how we want to reach it and um, how our organization internally is structured. Maybe that's interesting for you. Um, the third point I want to elaborate on um, is um, about creating political risk because what we do is, um, is to create political risks and this makes us so successful. In the end I want to tell you um, what the current situation of our movement is. Um, we are currently in a deadlock situation and I just want to explain to you why this is and what we do to come out of it to, to escape this deadlock situation. So let me start with um, telling you some f facts about the rental market in Berlin in the last 10 years. Um, housing prices in Berlin doubled over the last 10 years. Between 2009 and 2019, the average price for a flat doubled in this city. We have um, a city where 85% of housing um, takes place in a rented flat. Um, so the majority of people living in the city does not own its um, uh, their own um, houses, but they live in flats. So this is what what we're facing here. Um, exactly. And just to give you another number to make it even um, more concrete 25 of all relocations um, in Berlin are due to um, high rents. So people, every um, fourth people or every fourth um, person in Berlin changing their flat um, does that because the rent is too high. So um, combined with the fact that, that Berlin is a very poor city compared to other German cities, this is... Um, this is really uh, causing a bad situation in the city and we have um, an affordability crisis. Um, people cannot afford the houses they live in. Um, people cannot afford to stay um, in the neighborhoods um, where they grew up, where they know people, where they are rooted in some sense. Um, and this is all caused by too high rents actually in this city. So. That's what we fight against. Um, to give you two main reasons, I, I think you know that for this sit for this development in the last 10 years or even 20 years, um, one main reason is um, the privatization of um, social housing unit in the city, um, which took place in the 90s mainly um, mainly um, a project of um, left governments in Berlin. So this is not. Um, this is quite a surprise that the left governments used the, the social housing units that they possessed as a state for, for um, compensating their debts or for paying the debts they had, um, which is a silly idea, but which was at that time um, a method to cope with debts um, that you sell the social housing units in Berlin. Um, yeah, and this caused the situation and the second factor after privatization is the financialization of the housing market um, where you have big players 
um, big investors um, trying to, to make profit with um, housing, with the housing sector, um, with the basic right um, of housing. Um, just to give you a number or an impression of how big the sector, the financialized um, real estate industry in Berlin is, we have 1.9 million flats in Berlin and out of these 1.9 million only 110,000 flats uh, belonging to Deutsche Wohnen, the biggest um, player in Berlin. Um, so 5.5% 5, 5 of all flats in Berlin belong to one big player, um, which is a financial company actually um, dealing with um, with the rent, um, um, making profit with our rent. So just to give you an impression, and um, exactly this is what we fight against. Um, we are not alone with that. Um, I think we we fight together with lots of other activists, lots of other um, grassroots organizations from all over the world. Um, we are being approached from from organizations from all over the world, um, from Spain, from the US, from from France, from Southern Europe, from Northern Europe. Um, it doesn't matter actually. Um, also from from the Americas. Um, we have good connections to, to other um, people fighting this struggle and this makes us um, stronger actually um, as a movement here in Berlin and as a global movement, I would say. So um, that's it. Um, let me give you, um, we are, we're at point two, um, about, let me give you some information about our campaign and um, how we do what we do and what we actually want. We are not um, um, just a campaign for, for, for social housing, we are, we are trying to organize a referendum um, for, within the state of Berlin, not a national referendum, but a referendum within the state of Berlin. and. Mm, um, this referendum is non-binding, so if we have um, an election um, in the end of our efforts, um, then this election will not decide upon anything. Um, it is just a recommendation by the citizens of Berlin. So we want, a non we want, we want to reach a non-binding referendum, okay, but on which question? The question um, that we want to ask the citizens of the city is the following. Should we expropriate, um, based on Article 15 of the Constitution, should we um, expropriate um, all companies who own more than 3,000 flats in Berlin and who operate on a profit-oriented basis? Um, should we expropriate them, transfer their assets to a public body and um, compensate them under the market value of these assets. So what we actually want is to, 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 to create um, a huge public body, um, a huge player on the rental market, on the housing market, which is owned by the people of Berlin and not owned by the state. Um, this is a difference. We don't want to create um, a huge new state sector, um, but we want to create a sector, a public, publicly um, owned sector. Um, this is a difference for us. Um, we also don't want this public body, which takes the assets of the big companies, that this is um, a pub, uh, uh, Anstalt Öffentlichen Rechts, we call it, that this is a public body which is not um, governed democratically. We want it to be governed democratically. Uh, we, want, um, we want that this public body will be uh, managed by, um, by, by um, delegates from the city society, by delegates from the people who live in the houses, by the delegates, of, of course, of the parties who are ruling. We want this to be very transparent. We want this to be to democratic. Um, and this is something we guess that the people in the city also want. They want to be um, a part of the management of the, of the um, organization that surrounds their housing. Not all, but lots of people are, of course, motivated to, 
to participate in the management and in the, in the yeah organization of of them of their neighborhood of their housing conditions. Um, so this is what we want to enable actually with this expropriation. Um, so we are on the way of a three-stage pathway. Um, this is a three-stage process. Um, the first pro uh, stage is um, we left that behind us in the last year was to collect 20,000 signatures and we were very successful. We collected 77,000 signatures in the same time as we um, had to do for 20,000. So this was very good and um, we had lots of media coverage last year um, within this first stage of, of this three-stage pro process. Then we got stuck between the first um, stage and the second stage. Um, this is where we are now and um, we hope to, to reach the third stage after collecting um, the next 170,000 um, signatures. Um, and if we then are on the third stage, then we will um, have the possibility to hold a big um, referendum in Berlin um, with um, the condition um, that we have to um, reach a majority to win this referendum and that this majority must be um, 25 percent of all um, registered voters in Berlin. So even if we win but do not reach the 25 percent, we will not um, win in, to in total this uh, referendum. So we really have to mobilize people to go to vote, even if they won't, um, if they won't vote for us, to mobilize a lot of people, to politize a lot of people, if this third stage of the referendum will take place. Um, so that lots of people also go, go um, to the votings in, in favor of us and um, yeah, but we are not there yet. We are stuck between the first and second phase and this is all dreaming. So I don't want to, um, I don't want to make this um, point bigger than it is. And the third thing I want to talk about. So what are we, what ha have we done yet? And um, what is the effect of, of what we do? Yeah, I would call it creating political risk. So just let me give you an overview about our organization. We are, we are um, a group of um, grassroots people, um, mainly from, from di very different um, political organizations um, and also lots of people who have nothing to do with politics um, normally, as I actually um, am not in, I'm not in any party and lots of other people also, also are not in any party or any other organization. But um, nevertheless, also some organized people are among our organization, for example, from the Interventionistische Linke or people from the left party or people from the Green Party or people from, I don't know, um, um, from the labor unions and so on and so on. So we are a broad coalition um, of, of political actors, but also a coalition of, um, of the people who live in the flats, of the, um, yeah, of, of the people who rent flats who are dependent on renting and we um, have lots of initiatives, neighborhood initiatives among us um, who help us to organize um, organize the collection of signatures for example or the articulation of um, local problems within the um, ne local neighborhoods. So we are some kind of network that stretches um, all over the city. Um, um, with with local teams of, of um, we call it um, Nachbarschafts uh, or Kiez teams um, who are organizing um, work in their Kiez in their neighborhood um, to 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 to, to um, assemble people in the neighborhood to talk about the problems they have with the rents um, and to also organize some countermeasures. Um, Yes, and we have like within our organization, there's one special group that only is is doing this. We call it Starthilfe. Um, it's the group that is um, that is um, yeah assembling people in local neighborhoods. Then we have another group within um, Deutsche Wohnen Eignen, which is called um, 
the um, um, law group they are just talking about um, our um, yeah our proposal they are um, they are writing texts and so on um, they are doing all this law related work um, which is also very very important then the third group within us um, is the media group which is responsible for all the media coverage and the fourth group um, is um, the group that is um, responsible for um, street actions, actually logistic, logistics for street actions, planning street actions, planning demonstrations, planning some happenings, whatever. Um, this is also the group I am joining. So um, I'm in the action group, actually. Um, exactly. And this is the fourth group. And there is a fifth group, um, which is only responsible for building a structure to um, collect signatures. We call it Sammel AG, like the collection um, group, working group. Um, and this group is, um, yeah, co for example, collecting email addresses of people um, who want to support us when, when, when collecting signatures and so on. But as we are stuck between the first and the second phase of the referendum, it is not about collecting signatures right now. It is about, um, yeah, Exactly, it is about waiting for politics to make um, to to let us make the next step, and which is very very tiring, which is very very sad actually. Um, but I will talk about this in, in in a minute. All this work is not just um, for the sake of us being happy um, and <laughs> and assembling somewhere and talking. Um, it's not about um, it's not for the sake of just talking. It is um, for the sake of creating and visibilizing um, the political risk that companies, that huge um, housing companies are facing when they invest in Berlin. So what we do is to, to articulate the unrest of people in media by, by our like events, that this is taken up by the media um, especially, um, <laughs> especially by the finance media, actually, because they are really observing what we do. Um, this news coverage of what we are doing, of our political messages, is then being translated into financial risks, actually, um, by the analysts who have to value or to judge the value um, of the assets, for example, of Deutsche Wohnen and Co. And um, with us doing this whole thing of, of visualizing the unrest of people, um, the an analysis of, of a financial anal analyst, uh, ana analyst is, um, has to, um, has to um, take care of, of the political risks that we are creating since since we are doing it. And since we are doing it, the um, assessment, for example, um, of Berlin's um, credit rating um, is always also considering the political risk that we are creating, um, the political risk that the city society is creating. Um, and this is being translated into financial risks, for example, as Moody intimidated the Berlin government of um, downgrading their, um, their credit rating because of our work, because of, of um, the debate on the expropriation of these big companies. So we are actually not only um, um, an organization to help ourselves, but we have an effect on the financial market. Um, we have an effect on the markets, which is visible, which maybe can also be measured if, if, you, if you try. Um, if you link the news coverage and the, and the worth losses um, of Deutsche Wohnen and Co., um, you can do that um, and you can really directly see um, our effect uh, in terms of money, actually, that is being lost by these companies, which is good. Um, so let me come to the fourth point, um, the deadlock. So. I already said that we are deadlocked between um, the first and the second stage of our referendum. Um, and this is because um, between this first and second stage, um, the f I, I repeat, the first stage, we collected 77,000 uh, signatures. 
Um, we had to collect only 20,000. We were very successful. The second stage, we will have to collect 170,000 signatures. Mm, and then we come to the final stage. But um, now we are stuck between the first and the second. And this is because the SPD, the Social Democratic Party, um, is not really sure which strategy um, it should it should use um, regarding our our campaign. Um, its base, its um, its grassroots base in, in in Berlin is pro our campaign, at least half of them, and um, according to surveys, and um, the other half is against it. On the last delegates conference in October 2019, the SPD Berlin decided. Um, with a 60% majority not to support us officially. Um, but it is obvious that the SPD is, um, is not sure. Um, although they decided last year not to support us, they are not sure what they do. Um, and in the end, um, independently of what they think of expropriation or not, um, they should enable us to go forward with our um, campaign to... Um, to, to, to enable direct democracy in, in Berlin, no matter which opinion they have on expropriation or not, because this is not the question. Um, but what they do is to block us, um, the senator and the um, senator of inner affairs, um, to be more precise, is blocking us. Our um, referendum is on his desk, we know that, but he's not taking care of it, he's not taking care of going the next step. He can do this for a long time because there's no limit, time limit for him doing nothing um, legally. There's no limit. He can just let this referendum um, sit on top of his uh, desk and um, for a long time. So we are in some kind of legal um, paralyzation, um, which is really bad, um, which is really bad, especially during Corona, especially um, with Berlin becoming like uh, New York in the next 10 years, actually, or like Paris, I'm not exaggerating. Um, if you look at the, <laughs> uh, um, at the worth um, estimations of, of the big players, um, this is what will happen um, right now. The bet on the worth of the houses in Berlin is, um, is, a, is, is taking place within fantastic numbers. So they really bet on a huge growth and worth um, of their assets, Deutsche Wohnen and Co. So they bet, for example, on the worth um, rise and rise in worth of their assets of um, up to um, 2000%. Uh, um, and this also affects, affects the, the current ratings of their worth. So um, we are in a crisis of speculation, actually, um, and and this is being not being um, yeah fought against by the ruling parties, which are supposedly left parties, um, especially the SPD, the Linke, and the the Green Party are supporting us, but the SPD is trying to block us. They are not doing nothing against speculation in the city, um, and they're as a consequence, doing nothing against the destruction of the social structure, of the social cohesion of this in, within this city. Um, on the contrary, they're attracting more and more people um, in well-paid jobs, which is a good thing, of course. Um, but if you do not have um, the houses for the people um, to live in and you attract more and more people with well-paid jobs, it is clear what happens. Um, it is very clear what happens. Um, the city will look completely differently in five years. We'll have lots of other people here coming from abroad, which is, I repeat, a good thing, but not a good thing if you do not have the flats to live in for the people who are already here and the people who are coming to the city. Um, and this is a huge problem, and the SPD is blocking one viable solution, the expropriation of big companies, which we propose. And I think they should stop that. Um, okay, I think the time is over. I'm a bit over time, but I, um, I hope um, that I did not bore you too much um, and that it was um, some kind of informative and entertaining talk. Um, stay well and see you.